Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of Cozy Rock's SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2005. The Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for SQL Server Integration Services 2005, 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, and 2014 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the Dynamics CRM Destination Component, which you can use to integrate or migrate data to Dynamics CRM. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. In Cozy Rock's SSIS Plus product, we provide source and destination components for Dynamics CRM, which support both 32-bit and 64-bit modes. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do an upsert of some accounts into Dynamics CRM. An upsert inserts new records and updates existing records. Cozy Rock's component will use the field you specify to determine the record to be updated. I'll show you how to set this up using the duplicate detection rules in Dynamics CRM. I'll also show you where to find the GUID for newly created records and how to determine which record or records had an error. And finally, I'll show you how to write fields that are actually a list of references to other records. First thing we need to do is install the Dynamics CRM destination in the toolbox. So we right mouse click in the toolbox, we go to Choose Items, and then we go to SSIS Data Flow Items, and we scroll down until we find Dynamics CRM destination, and we check in the checkbox, and there you can see it's a Cozy Rock component. And now you can see we have the Dynamics CRM destination in our toolbox. Now I'll show you how to configure the component. First we configure the Connection Manager. We go to New Connection, and there's Dynamics CRM. We select that, and our deployment is live. And now we'll type in our credentials. and the organization is Cozy Rock. Now we'll test the connection and it's good. So we click OK and we get out of this. Now we'll go and drag the Dynamics CRM destination component onto our canvas and we'll connect the two components. Now we'll go in and configure this component. So we choose the connection manager that we just set up we go to Component Properties, and our action is going to be Upsert. So that means that the component will automatically detect whether it's a new record or an existing record that we're updating. We go in and choose the Entity of Account. And now we're going to set Ignore Missing Identifier to True. And I'll show you why we're doing that in a bit. Now we'll go to Column Mappings. We need to map some columns manually. We have six columns that we're mapping from our spreadsheet to Dynamics CRM. Now we'll go to Input and Output Properties and we click on Dynamics CRM Destination Input and we're going to set it up so that the component will not fail on errors, but it will redirect the errors. And we're going to set up an Excel spreadsheet for it to write the errors to. Now we'll set up the Excel file for the component to write the errors to, and we're using the Excel Destination Plus component from Cozy Rock because it supports both 32-bit and 64-bit modes, whereas the one that comes with SSIS only supports 32-bit mode. Now we'll drag the red arrow down here and connect them. Now we'll go in and configure the Excel Destination Plus component. 
So that's the connection manager for the Excel spreadsheet and this is our special sheet in there to write the errors to. We'll take a look at the columns and we have all six of our columns that we're inputting from the spreadsheet in here as well as four columns that get added for writing the errors to. So we'll exit from there. And now we're ready to execute. So we have success and we'll stop debugging. Now we'll go check our execution results. It looks like eight records were written to the Excel file we set up for errors and seven records were written to or updated in the dynamic CRM service. Remember we had the one record with an error so it was not updated in dynamic CRM. And it's not only error records that get written to the Excel sheet we set up. That's also how the component provides us with the ID for any new records that were just added to dynamic CRM. Now we'll take a look at the input records that we have in our Excel file and for all of the records I'm updating the phone number so that the last two digits are 22. That makes it easy when we look at dynamic CRM to see if the record was updated or not. In the first record I have an invalid primary contact ID and it's invalid because I have a non-hexadecimal digit as the last digit. And then in the second record, I have a primary contact ID that is in a valid format, but it doesn't match any of the contacts in Dynamics CRM. And that's where the ignore missing identifier setting comes into play because we set this to true so that our component will just ignore that field and go ahead and update the rest of the fields in this record. And then the next three records already exist, so they're going to be updated things like the phone number, number, number of employees, and the primary contact. And the last three records are new records. Here we're looking at the sheet I set up for the component to write errors to, as well as other information about the processing of the records. The records that had no errors have a negative one in the error code column. A record with an error will have a number greater than zero in that column. As you can see, the first record has a 1 in the error code column because it had an incorrectly formatted primary contact ID. You can figure out what the problem was by looking at the error description. This is also how the component provides the ID for new records that were added to Dynamic CRM. The last three records were new, so the values in the ID column are the GUIDs that Dynamic CRM created for these records. Also notice that the second record, which had a primary contact ID that didn't match any contacts in Dynamic CRM, was successfully processed because we had set the ignore missing identifier parameter to true. Now we'll take a quick look at the account records in Dynamic CRM. As you can see, basic company, which had an error, wasn't updated, and you can tell that by the fact that the last two digits of the phone number are not twos. Best of Things, on the other hand, was updated even though the primary contact ID didn't match a contact because we set Ignore Missing Identifier to True. In order for the upsert action to work, I had to set up duplicate detection in Dynamic CRM. That's how the component will learn if a record is being updated or inserted. I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. We go down to Settings, and then we choose Data Management. Click on Duplicate Detection Settings. See here's a checkbox where we checked Enable Duplicate Detection. And then you can tell Dynamic CRM to detect it, in this case, when a record is created or updated or during data import. Now we'll go look at the Duplicate Detection Rules. This is how Dynamic CRM determines if a record is a duplicate or a new record if you haven't provided the GUID. As you can see here, I've set it up so that for account records, a matching account name, email address, or phone number will be considered a duplicate. For contacts, a record with the same email address will be considered a duplicate. And for leads, a record with the same email address will be considered a duplicate. There are certain types of records that represent activities. 
Examples of activity records are email, appointment, phone call, task, and letter. Many times you want these activities to be associated with several different contacts, accounts, or users. An example is an email that is being sent to several contacts and users. That means the to field in the email record needs to contain references to several other records. I'm going to show you an example of how to include more than one contact in the to field of an email record. Here you can see the to field. In the first email record, I used the GUID to indicate the people the email was sent to. In the second email record, I used the email address to indicate the people the email was sent to. Here's a record that I inserted, and I used the email address to represent the contacts. You can see that these didn't get translated automatically into that contact's name. It is possible to do that manually from within the Dynamics CRM service. Now here's a record that I inserted, and on this one I used the GUID to represent the contacts. As you can see, these did get translated automatically into each contact's name. One final thing I want to mention is that there are other specialized actions specific to Dynamics CRM that you may want to perform. They're not actions that are appropriate to implement as part of the destination component, so CuzzyRec has created some reusable scripts for these processes under the section Related Scripts, as you can see here. These scripts provide customized functionality. If they don't meet your specific needs, you can still use them as a reference to implement your own reusable scripts for your specific needs. We also welcome your suggestions for other processes you would like to see implemented in a reusable script. We encourage you to submit these suggestions via the feedback link, which is available in the lower right-hand corner of every page. In this demonstration, I showed you how easy it is to do an upsert of some accounts into Dynamics CRM, and I showed you how to set up the duplicate detection rules in Dynamics CRM so that it will use fields other than the GUID to detect duplicates. I also showed you where to find the GUID for newly created records and how to determine which record or records had an error. And finally, I showed you how to write fields that are actually a list of references to other records. This component comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.